All right, now let's use the new WinDebug preview for source level debugging, which is more fun. So you go to compile your C++ with the x64 native tools command prompt, and then create this program, which I've already done. So let me demonstrate that. You go here, go down to the Visual Studio, which is here, and get the x64 native tools command prompt. And it's in C my app. So I go C colon my app. All right. And now I can look what's in there with type. All right. So here's a program. And it's got uh, a main down here that defines a couple variables and calls my function of those variables. Then it goes to my function and it does some math on these variables. And uh, that's it. Just has a few local variables and a couple functions just to do some simple little stuff. So I'm going to uh, compile it with just CL. Okay, now I can run my app, .exe, and it crashes. And I, you, if you pay attention to this, you can see why B is 0, and it comes in here as P2, and then it divides by 0. So at this point, it crashes dividing by zero, and that's intentional. That's why it complains. So I got a program with an interesting defect, and now we're going to debug it with source-level debugging. So let's get rid of this and run WinDebug Preview. And I don't need to be the administrator. I'm just trying to run a user land code here. So now I do File, Launch and go to C, my app, my app. All right. It loads it, just like Ollie would have, and then it puts a break point at the start, and we're ready to go. So now I'm going to search for the main symbols in my app. I'm going to X, my app, bang, uh, star main star, right? Yep, star main star, just what we've done before. And there's my app main. Um, well, there should have been no results. Oh, I know why. Excuse me. I did the wrong thing. Let me uh, stop this. When I compiled it, I had already compiled it, and I didn't delete the old stuff that was left over first, which is what I should have done because the old stuff included the symbols. So I cut to the second part of the project by accident instead of the first. So let's fix that. Go to the X64 native tools, then to my app. Okay, now do a directory and see there's the symbols. I don't want those, so I'm going to delete them. I'm a star dot pdb. And I'm going to delete everything that's not necessarily like my app, um, tab, no, directory, delete, that's why, delete my, okay, delete the executable, and delete the object file, which it's not letting me use tab for some reason, there. Now do a directory, the only thing I have is the source code, this is what I wanted, now I compile the source code. Now I do a directory, and all it did was create the executable and the object code. It did not create a symbol table because I didn't put any flags in the compile command to make that happen, and it's not the default. So now I've got a normally compiled program with symbols stripped from it. And if I open that in WinDebug Preview, I can click File, Oh, and launch, and launch the one I previously launched. There's The other ones are up here, so I can just double-click that, and that will launch it. And we're back in here, and now if I search for symbols in that file, I should not find them. So that's my app, bang, star, main, star. And it finds nothing. That's what I wanted to show you. And I think we just now compile it with symbols. So there there are, and you can see why, when you do LM, you can see why. LM shows the loaded modules. And there's my app, no symbols. There's symbols in kernel 32 and ntdil, but there's no symbols for my app, so it can't find the main or any other named point in it. 
you could still see the code with uh, addresses, but you'd have to refer to everything by absolute addresses. So that's no fun. You compile it with the ZI switch to fix that. So let's get out of here and go back in here. And let's see if I can find out why. Let's do CL slash question mark. And here's some switches going by. And somewhere in here is ZI. So we might be able to find it in all these options. Um, there's FI, architecture, ZE, ZA. Uh, I don't see ZI yet. There it is, ZI, enable debugging information. The same thing as dash G in GCC that we used in Linux. So that's all. That's what we need to do is add the ZI switch. So enter, return. Okay, now I do a directory. All right, and there are no symbols. I'm just not going to bother to delete that stuff. It'll recreate it. Now I compile my app with slash ZI. My app. There. Now, you notice the slash debug here. And now if I do a directory, now it has created these PDB files. Those are the symbols. And by the way, they're not small. And I guess this ilk file is probably part of it too, linking the two together. I'm not quite sure, but I know it'll work now. Now if I go back to uh, WinDebug Preview. And load that program again here. And now, notice it loads with the source code. Very different than before. I have the C source code right there. I do not need to do um, debugging from the, uh, the assembly code. It loads it right in the source code for me. All right. And uh, I think it remembers I've done this before is why it went back there. If it's the first time you use it, you'll have a little more to do. You'll see this. And now you can do uh, search for the symbols, and you'll find symbols, and set a breakpoint and run to it. So I think it's because I, I'm not sure why I did this the first time here, but anyway, the point is now when you run to it, to go to your main, that's when you see this. It will, um, in fact, it ran and it divided by zero, so it totally ran this time when I loaded it. Uh, it did not break at the start, which is rude. So let me see if I can figure out why that happened. Let's try this again. It should have, I'll just launch it this way. Launch executable, my app. And it did it again. It ran and crashed. Somehow it's running right away in the debugger, which is annoying. And uh, assembly maybe? Hmm. I don't know why it's actually running and not breaking at the start of the, the app. That is very strange. And I've not seen that before. So somehow I've broken something here. Um, let me try some tricks. Let's get rid of this. And let's try making a different app of a different name. Let's do copy. Oh, it's C-O-P-Y in Microsoft. Um, my app. .cpp to my app 2.cpp. I think the debugger is somehow remembering what I've done before. Now let's do clzi my app 2. Okay, now do a directory. Now I have my app 2, cpp, exe, and object, and I have the symbols. I don't have the symbols for my app 2. All right, things are getting out of control here. Let's make a directory demo, and let's copy my app two into there. All right, now let's go into that directory to get rid of all this old stuff. All right, now directory. Now, wait, it's not here. Okay, copy did. Oh, I used the wrong copy command. Okay, copy. What's that? Yeah, source destination, yeah. So I got to copy my app to .cpp here, there. Now, dir. Okay, now I have the source code and nothing else in here. Now I do CLZI, 
my F2. Now I see the debug. Okay. Now I do a directory. Now I've got all the stuff I should have. My app too. Let's open this one in the debugger and hopefully it won't feel like it's already run this one and give me some weird result. So uh, windybug, which the Microsoft people call windbag. I've not gotten used to. File, launch, demo, my app too. All right. And now I get the normal expected results, where it loads and it breaks in NTDIL before running it, which is what I should see. All right. Now I should be able to find the symbols with X, my app two, bang, star main, star. And now I see various things called, including the main one called main up there, which is the natural entry point. Good. So now I'm going to put a breakpoint at the main. BU at my app to bang main, which is, of course, the C main routine, the normal way you enter the program. And now I run to that point, and now it will run to that point and stop. And it should show me the source code. But maybe I have to do something. Click go. It runs to the top. And the top left pane should show the source code. And somehow I'm not seeing that here either, which is weird. Did it go to the main? Run. It hit an int 3. Debugger break. Uh -huh. All right. Well, what happens if I run it again? Oh, OK. There was some extra breakpoint in there. I don't, something else weird happened. But anyway, now I'm where I wanted to be. See, now it has launched main. The arrow tells me where I am. I'm here. So it's loaded it, and now I can step through the code in the C level. And that's what I wanted to do. You can do a source level debugging. So I can step into twice. So here's step into, just like you debug. Notice the variables are down here. A and B and B, they both have zero. If I step into, it goes down and gets ready to do the long a equals 2. If I step into again, it executes long a equals 2 and puts a 2 in the a. So you see the variables here as you go ahead. All right? The, the original RDB doesn't have the, um, C, the C code screen, right? That's right. Ali debug does not do source level debugging. It just does assembly level. So this is the kind of developer would do. You'd work with your source code. You don't really have to look at the assembly much. And you can do it, and this is why I like Ghidra. In Ghidra, you can at least get something resembling source code, although I haven't tried stepping through it. But yeah, this is a much easier way for developers to do it when you have the source code. All right, anyway, and now you can run this thing until it crashes, of course, and you'll see a crash message. If you keep stepping into, then it'll um, set B to zero, then it's gonna call the function, and go move to the function, you see the arrow moving. Now it's going to go, it's going to, now the variables include X and Y and P1 and P2 and P3. And so if you keep stepping into, it's going to go here and go there. And now it's going to try to divide by zero. And you're going to get an error here, integer divide by zero. So it's, uh, it's logical. Anyway, that's the, another way to use this wind debugger to do source level debugging. And I don't know if you can do that with the old one or not, but it's pretty nice with the new one. So... That's a somewhat nice, useful feature. All right.